It was 1994. It was dark, so no one saw two silhouettes opening the emergency exits of a glass dome complex in Arizona, known as Biosphere 2. They were determined to free seven people locked inside for a month, risking their lives in the name of science. The mission was accomplished, but they got hit with trespassing and vandalism charges. The vandals were Abigail Ayling and Mark Van Fillo. They were among the first eight poor devils who lived in that place as guinea pigs, and they didn't want anyone else to go through the same horrors they had experienced. $150 million were spent to see if humans could create suitable living conditions on other planets, like Mars. To do this, scientists built a mini-world with over 3,000 species of plants and animals. Biosphere 2 was a sealed-off 3-acre habitat, complete with its own mini-rainforest, a private beach with a coral reef, a grassland savanna, a marsh, and even a desert. Between 1991 and 1993, nothing could enter or exit that place. The group of eight people locked inside called themselves Biospherians, rocking matching Star Trek-like jumpsuits, growing their own food, and breathing their own air. They began with high hopes and a five-star hotel-style breakfast, but things took a darker turn over the months. The whole team was starving and turning orange. In Biosphere 1, which is the real Earth, you can order a pizza in two minutes. But inside Biosphere 2, it took them an endless four months to whip up a margarita-style pie. They had to harvest wheat for the dough and milk goats for the cheese. The goal was to be completely self-sufficient, and they became part of an atmosphere, quite literally. When they breathed out, their CO2 fed the sweet potatoes they were growing. And those sweet potatoes became part of them since they were essentially eating the same carbons over and over again. They had so many sweet potato feasts that their skin actually turned orange from all the excess beta-carotene. What seemed like a funny situation at the time highlighted a big issue. The crop yields in Biosphere 2 were a total disappointment and the crew was starving. They were going crazy from hunger, and moments of sudden anger led to doing regrettable things, like stealing bananas from the basement storeroom. At some point, the freezer had to be locked. Over the first six months, each of them lost between 18 and 58 pounds of weight. Every day, someone took charge of weighing out fresh food for the cook, logging the information about nutrients into the computer to make sure the crew hit their recommended calorie, protein, and fat goals. Initially, meals were served buffet-style, but as the crew got hungrier, the cooks started to meticulously divide their food into equal portions. Their diet, mostly sweet potatoes, carrots, fruits, and occasional meat on Sundays, were supposed to keep them going during those exhausting 80-hour work weeks of heavy physical labor. Biospherians were leaving every meal still hungry, and they had recurring dreams of McDonald's hamburgers, sushi, Snickers bars, and cheesecake. The air was running out. The entire place was completely sealed, with steel and glass at the top and a solid steel floor underneath. Managers made sure to check everything coming in to avoid synthetic materials emitting harmful gases. Living areas were furnished with wood and wool and they couldn't use chemical deodorants or blow out birthday candles. Biospherians were counting on the food they grew and their many rainforests to produce enough oxygen for them to survive. However, they were losing oxygen very fast, drowning in their own carbon dioxide emissions, and worst of all, they had no idea why. With another nine months of the experiment to go, oxygen levels had dropped from 21% to around 15% which feels like living at the top of Mount Fuji. They felt awful, basically dragging themselves around the biosphere. They couldn't even finish a sentence without stopping to catch a breath. Then sleep apnea kicked in, with some of them waking up gasping for air. To bring down the carbon levels inside Biosphere 2, they tried some desperate moves, like growing plants like crazy, cutting back on watering the soil as much as possible, and even giving up on tilling. Nothing worked. So everyone decided they had hit a dangerously low point and asked for help. Refrigerated trucks showed up to pump more pure oxygen into Biosphere 2. As soon as the gas started flowing in, they burst out laughing and began running around. The ecosystem was a total mess. Hummingbirds and honeybees vanished after a couple of months, so plants weren't getting pollinated anymore. Worms and broad mites attacked crops, and cockroaches just took over. 
four species of cockroaches were brought inside to recycle organic matter, but the regular household cockroach was the ultimate survivor. They somehow sneaked in and multiplied, becoming a serious threat to crops. At night, the kitchen got flooded with cockroaches as soon as the lights went out. To combat the infestation, the group greased coffee mugs with lubricant and put pieces of papaya inside as bait. Roaches would climb inside, but they couldn't scale the slippery sides to escape. Being hungry, lacking oxygen, dealing with bug infestations – that's enough to make anyone go nuts. Heated arguments led to cups being thrown and people being spat at. Eventually, the whole group just split into two. They stopped talking and could walk right past one another in the hallways without even making eye contact. Half of them wanted more food and oxygen to continue the research with some dignity, while the other half believed in survival without external help, no matter the costs. The truth is, the sealed chamber had been breached long before that. Just two weeks after they got inside, a biospherian named Jane Pointer cut off the tip of her finger in a cooking accident while making rice. The mission's doctor tried sewing the tip back on, but it didn't work, and her finger turned black within days. She went to a hospital outside for surgery, and a couple hours later, she sneaked back inside, carrying a duffel bag filled with supplies like computer parts and color film. Reporters would only learn of that sneaky delivery months later. And because of that, many people have questioned the credibility of the entire experiment. Media treated the experiment like a reality show, branding it as trendy ecological entertainment. Headline news around the world made it sound as if they were on the brink of losing their lives, to the point where families were concerned, calling the biospherians to check if they were really okay. The group felt like they were in a human zoo, with tourists coming from far away to peer into the glass cage. In the first six months alone, more than 150,000 people visited the place. Biosphere 2 ended up becoming a pop culture punchline, inspiring a comedy movie called Biodome and decades of funny sketches. You might be wondering why none of them quit the experiment and walked out the front door. Well, none of the environmentalists wanted to be the first to admit it was too much to handle. Plus, they were all still hopeful they could somehow crack the puzzle of building Earth number 2. By the end, they had managed to find 7 tons of missing oxygen. It had been absorbed by the concrete. Even though being breathless all the time might seem like the biggest challenge they face, the biospherians said that learning how to deal with people in a closed environment was even harder. It looks like the experiment was a huge failure, but the group did learn a lot of valuable lessons. They proved that a sealed ecosystem could work for years. They contributed to studies on reef restoration, and their farms show that high productivity and full nutrient recycling could be achieved without toxic chemicals. In case you wonder, this wasn't the end of the glass complex. The second mission inside Biosphere 2 took place in March 1994. Now you can go back to the beginning of the video to understand how that worked out. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.